Two British soldiers have been arrested by the Iraqi authorities in Basra tonight after apparently firing at police. Angry scenes erupted as crowds hurling rocks and petrol bombs attacked a British armoured personnel carrier. One soldier was engulfed by flames as he escaped. The Ministry of Defence said it was trying to get access to the two servicemen but refused to confirm reports that they were Special Forces personnel working undercover. Two Iraqis were killed in the violence which happened in the southern province of Basra. Liam Halligan's report contains pictures viewers may find distressing. Hemmed in by an angry mob, as the rocks and petrol bombs fly, a British armoured vehicle tries reversing out of trouble. As the onslaught becomes more intense, the soldiers inside fear for their lives. One flees the blazing vehicle, is pelted with stones, then appears to be set upon by the crowd. We have no confirmation the soldier escaped. The scene then in Basra this afternoon. This British controlled area until recently has been far less volatile than the rest of Iraq. In total, two British armoured vehicles were attacked today. The Ministry of Defence isn't confirming any British casualties. This violence was sparked by an incident involving this white car. Iraqi police say the car contained weapons and explosives and was driven by two undercover British servicemen dressed as Arabs. Iraqi police have issued these pictures of the men. The MODs asked us not to identify them. They're accused of killing one Iraqi policeman and wounding another. A policeman approached them and then one of these guys fired at him. Then the police managed to capture them. They refused to say what their mission was. They said they were British soldiers and to ask their commander about their mission. Shia militiamen from the Mehdi army have been blamed for kidnapping two SAS men yesterday in the southern Iraqi town of Basra. The incident sparked a riot and led to the bulldozing of a prison by British forces who were trying to free negotiators sent to secure the men's release. Iraqi television showed pictures of the two soldiers in detention yesterday, including the wigs they apparently used to disguise themselves. It's all raised fears of a dangerous escalation in tension between the British Army and Iraqi authorities. As our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, now reports. Iraqi state TV filmed the two Special Forces soldiers. The British authorities requested that we obscure their faces. This was their disguise, dark wigs and Arab headscarves. This was their equipment, assault rifles with magazines, a light machine gun with belt ammunition, as well as an anti-tank rocket launcher, communications equipment and a global positioning system. On the broadcast, a policeman said their medical pack might contain a bomb. It didn't, of course. But that was the rumour on the street in Basra today, as residents seemed to blame the British for what happened. The British forces arrived immediately and sealed off the area to release the British soldiers who disguised themselves in Arab clothes. They opened fire on the intelligence services building. I'm against the presence of the British forces. We have to deal with our affairs ourselves, and the Iraqi, not British forces, should protect the people. That's where the trouble comes from. Morning revealed the damage done to the prison when British armoured vehicles crashed through last night. They were trying to rescue six negotiators who'd been trying to persuade the police to hand over the SAS men. An angry crowd had gathered outside. We were on duty when armoured vehicles smashed through the outer walls of the building. There were four British armoured vehicles entering and then driving in the nearby streets. They ran over a car that belonged to one of our colleagues. Another policeman saw damages to the wall of the room where he sat. And when he went outside to his car, they followed him. What shall we do? Four armoured vehicles and grenades. They attack an official department and run over civilian and police vehicles. Almost simultaneously, another operation was mounted to seize the SAS-2. Instead of being surrendered to the British, as the Iraqi Interior Ministry had apparently ordered, they'd been handed over to militiamen loyal to the radical cleric Moqtadar al-Sadr and had been taken to a house. I'm delighted that the two British soldiers are back with British forces and are in good health. 